In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about freestyle quads, mini quads, and all the exciting stuff of getting started in this hobby. Now, this is the fifth video. This is the fifth video in a series playlist that I've been putting together where I talk about initially radios, simulators, whoops, goggles. Now we're talking about quad. What I'm going to do is I'll show you what I'm flying. First up, we've got my freestyle quad. I'm still flying an analog signal. If you don't know what that is, you should probably go to the last video and check that out. But it's an older Apex. This is the first edition Apex. Now the difference between this quad and a new analog quad would be some of the onboard electronics that this frame used to come with. They don't make these parts anymore and that's why it kind of stands out on its own as kind of like a legacy product. If you were gonna build an analog quad today, you can absolutely do that. It just wouldn't have these specific parts in it. Most people are going to gravitate towards a DJI quad. And truth be told, it is a much simpler setup and it's a lot more plug and play. Let's actually dive into the quad itself and I'll show you guys a breakdown of what it looks like. All right, so we've got an interesting angle here. I apologize, I don't usually film this direction. But this is the freestyle quad I was just showing you a moment ago this is the analog build now i'm actually going to swap that out and show you guys the digital because i think that's more relevant to today in general for those getting started and this is the same frame as the other quad but this is running a digital dgi camera on the front and a cadix vista on the back super old technology even in this i'm very behind the times I know it, but it works for me and I don't see a, a reason to actually upgrade just yet. So when I need to, I will. Let's just talk about the outside of the frame and then I have an open one that I'll show you. So we've got an HD camera, 3D printed, super ugly mount right here. And this holds an Action 2 camera. This is just a very small HD cam that you can get. It's like 150 bucks. Sometimes I'll run a GoPro, but for now, that's what I usually rock. We've got some battery straps here, and you would just literally put your battery on top, strap it down, and you're good to go. Let's switch over to an open quad, and we'll go a little more into detail. So we, we still have our four motors. These are a different brand. These are 2306 1850 Vulcans. 1850 kV made by VCI. These are pretty decent motors too, as well. So the inside of the quad, we have our four motors. All four motors are soldered, direct soldered to the ESC. The ESC is this board right here, and it is a 45 amp FETTEC board that has an XT60 connected to it, and you would connect a 6S battery pack to it. So I actually have a 6S pack right here. And what that means is 6S is six cells. So this is a six cell bound pack that connects directly to the ESC. Now, this is what controls the motors and it regulates pretty much everything with the flight in terms of talking directly to the electronics on the ends here. And then we've got the brains of the operations, which is this flight controller, also made by FETTEC. This is a G4 board, and it talks directly to the ESC. So everything that gets processed basically happens through the flight controller on top. And there are a bajillion copies or variants of flight controller and ESC. They're not all compatible with each other directly because they have these wiring harnesses, which if you can't tell, they have like eight to 10 wires. And sometimes the order of these wires are different. So you just need to be aware of that. You might have to like repin these wiring harnesses if you start mixing and matching things. But what I recommend, especially if you're starting out, is you get a stack that you would buy together 
And that way you know they're plug and play and they will plug directly into each other without any risk of blowing up your gear. So that is our flight controller. Let's go to the front of the quad. On the front, we've got, I believe this is a Nebula Pro camera. This is an old camera at this point, but it would just be mounted here at like a 25 degree angle. I'm just missing the screws. We've got a capacitor here. It's just a 50 volt. It's always good to run a capacitor on a 6S quad. It just kind of smooths everything out and it will help the electronics last longer. Down here, I've got a FETTEC spike absorber. And what this does is it just slices the voltage off at a certain point, just made to prolong the electronics. Now let's talk about the back. The back here, we've got an old Cadex Vista. This is nothing to write home about. Now they have the 03 air unit and soon to be, very soon to be, the 04 air unit, which will replace this. So you can see it's pretty small and manageable. And most frames these days have more than enough space back here to mount this. On top, we've got our receiver. So if you've watched the radio video, you would know all about radios and protocols. This is a tracer receiver that talks directly to my radio. And we've got our power and signal wires that go to the flight controller. So all of my radio inputs go through this and it gets fed directly into the flight controller. And then the flight controller figures out what I'm trying to do and we have flight. Talk a little bit about these antennas on the back as well. So the tracer has these UFL antennas. They're actually these smaller antennas on the back. And that is our horizontal and vertical antenna here. And these 3D printed parts make it very easy to just snap on there. Then we've got also a UFL connected antenna for the video. That's what this big guy is. It's covered in heat shrink tubing. And that is basically what makes up a quadcopter. All right, so let's jump into the computer and I'll show you guys what I would look at if I were you starting from scratch. All right, so now it's time to pick a direction and figure out how you want to start with your first quad. Now we already talked about whoops in a different video and those whoops can be bought on their own or you can get them as a kit with the radio and the goggles and they usually come with accessories and whatnot so you could just start flying right away. But right now we're really focusing in on freestyle quads and getting your foot in the door with that. Now, there are a couple of different directions we can go in. We can either find parts ourselves and put something together. We can follow somebody's instructions. Usually it's a YouTuber, a pilot that already has a build that they really like, and you can just copy their build or you can go the route of getting a bind and fly or an RTF as they call it. And these are already ready to go. Now, these are an excellent way to get your foot in the door. However, I have seen some build quality issues with these in the past where they just weren't built to my actual standards in the sense that there were configuration problems and the video signal was bad and the soldering wasn't the best. Keep in mind, I'm talking about four or five years ago. I'm sure that the quality control has gone up quite a bit by this point. But when it comes to something like this, I am a little hesitant because I don't know what the parts are that they're using in these. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to replace them when they break. And I say when they break, because if this is your one and only drone, or if you get two of these, you're going to need the replacement parts for these. And that might mean not being able to get the motor or not being able to get the arm for this frame or the top plate or whatever it is that goes into this. You might have to go to the manufacturer like iFlight and hit them up for some of these parts. And while some of these parts are probably available at GetFPV or Pyrodrone or wherever, it leaves a lot to chance. And when you know you're going to be breaking stuff, it's just, I think there's a better way to go about it. 
So bind and flies are good, but there is kind of that drawback of, can I get parts for this? And how quickly can I get it back in the air so I can continue to fly? Let's take a look at the build it kit. Now, this is not the way that I went, but this might actually be a better way to get into the hobby. And I'll tell you why I like it. It comes with everything that you need to get started. It comes with the frame, motors, flight stack, pretty much everything. I believe this, yes, you get to choose what system you want to rock and it'll come with the camera and the VTX as well. And I think that this is kind of a nice option because these are parts that you can get. This is a Luminaire QAVS frame and this is a frame that GetFPV actually makes themselves. So we can, uh, we can pull it up right here and we could see that they've got different parts, arms, plates, all the goodies that you might need are all right here. And what I also like about these kits is that it actually comes with an instructional video where they build it with you and show you step by step exactly what you need to build the exact quad. And they go into all of the detail to get going. So I really like that. So there's the Johnny FPV kit. This is a newer kit. And then there's also the Joshua Bardwell kit, which is over here. And so this one's out of stock at the moment. This is the analog. I'm not sure if they're gonna even replace this one, to be honest. But he has some other kits as well. And these kits come with everything but the radio, I believe, comes with this is a walk snail combo, and then you can get it with the DJI Goggles 3. So soon enough, they'll have the N3, I'm sure, as part of their package. But the, o the, uh, the Goggles 3 will handle the latest and greatest as well. And it comes with everything that you need to get going. And you know that the parts are all going to work together. So that takes a lot of the guesswork out of trying to figure out what to build. It's all right here and you can actually customize each kit with whatever it is that you need. You can order the radio with it. If you wanna just use a DJI radio, you can order it right here. And batteries, chargers, everything that you need. And he's got a really video on how to actually put this together. So figuring out your first freestyle quad is not necessarily super straightforward because there are different ways you can get into the hobby. And I hope I did a good job of outlining that. We took a look at what makes a quadcopter tick, and then I showed you a few options for how to get started quickly. If it was me getting started today, I would go the route of looking at a build that already exists. And truth be told, that's how I got into the hobby myself. I started with a Stinger Swarm build. I got his frame, and then I built all the components to a T, just following his video and that's how I got my first quad up in the air. These days, it doesn't seem that a lot of YouTubers are doing their own personalized builds. I could be missing something, but it seems that the Bardwell kit is kind of the best of both worlds because he's got the video that kind of lays everything out and you get the kit where everything that you need is all in one. So if it was me getting started today, I would at least give that a consideration before trying to venture out on my own, trying to figure out what parts to piece together. I'm gonna have more in this series coming out soon. So I wanna thank each and every one of you for sticking around. Please drop a comment down below. Let me know how I did. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video in this series very soon.